And hi, everyone. Welcome today to the program. We're so excited that you are part of what's happening here on Viewpoint. And today we're going to be looking into the pages of God's Word in Matthew 27 and talking about I am. We're talking about an aspect today. I am the God who died and took your place. That's exactly what Jesus has done. I'm so glad that God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. We are excited about the fact that we are leading up to, of course, the glorious resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's the hallmark of our Christianity. That's what our faith hinges on today. And I'm certainly glad today that we have that promise from God that salvation is of the Lord. He's prepared a place for us. And Jesus gives us those encouraging words. Let not your heart be troubled. Welcome, everyone, to Viewpoint. I'm Carlton Duck, pastor of Gethsemane Baptist Church. Yeah, great things are happening at GBC Gethsemane Baptist here in Lynchburg. We're not hard to find. 411 Blue Ridge Street, that's one block off of Lakeside Drive. We're near the main entrance to uh, the University of Lynchburg. Very convenient, and we have a beautiful facility, a wonderful church that you can come and celebrate the Lord. And yes, we are going to be celebrating. We have, we have plans for the Resurrection Sunday. We've got plans leading up to that. We've got services every Sunday at 930 and 1130. And you can be a part of that. And our kids, of course, get the Kitty Care Kit. That is a great tool that's bringing our kids in and giving them the word right there in the pew. We're still taking serious the situation. And I know there's a lot of discussion and so forth pertaining to the coronavirus and the pandemic. And we're just moving aggressively along, cautiously trusting the Lord and still proclaiming the message of God's word. I sure hope you can come and be with us this Sunday. And also you can join us on Facebook. We've got a great Facebook ministry, Carlton Duck. And you can go to that Facebook page and you will get a great blessing. If you're not a part of it, get on, click on, and come and join us on uh, Carlton Tuck, a great Facebook page. You'll get Wednesday night. You'll get a uh, time in the Word. And right now we are on a study on the road to the resurrection. That's at 5 p.m. Then at 7 p.m. I come back and we have a season of prayer a time in the Word, and it's just really a good night. Great things are happening at Gethsemane, and I hope you can come and be a part of what God is doing. Let's get into the pages of God's Word for a few moments today. I am the God who died to take your place. You know, praise God today that He is the great I Am. There is no dispute about it. People may try to dispute it, but it is an undeniable fact that he is the great I am, not the great I was. He's the great I am. He has always been and shall always be. He is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. He's everything. And thank God that we have him in our lives today and realize that he died and took our place. This is a special time of the year leading up to Of course, the great celebration of the cross and the resurrection. That's what we base our faith on in Christ Jesus. And to know today that he has provided salvation for every person that will come to him and believe. You've got to understand the nature of his substitutionary uh, sacrifice means that Jesus Christ took our place at the cross. We did not get what we deserve. He took our sin. He nailed it to the cross, and in turn, he offers us salvation. I love how Jesus says, all that will come to me, I will in no wise cast out. Now listen, I want you to take today an inventory of your life. I know we've been through a pandemic and still going through it, and I know we look for all the excuses that of why we're not doing what we're doing, but cut through all of that. What are you doing with Christ? Better yet, what have you done with Christ? Do you know him as your personal Savior? Have you invited him into your heart and your life? You've got to understand today about the substitutionary sacrifice that Jesus did over 2,000 years ago on the cross for you and I. Jesus faced the wrath of God so that you and I could enjoy the peace of God. 
And I'm glad that the peace of God exceeds and surpasses all understanding. Actually, none of us deserve today God's salvation. None of us today are worthy of it. And none of us today qualify today. But you've got to understand there's one who is worthy, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm so glad that he came and he took everything that was against us. He nailed it to his cross. And I'm glad for the grace of the great I am today who died on the cross. He gives us peace. And today that peace cannot be taken from you. It is a gift from God. So the only hope that we have is in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, who paid the sin debt in full, and thank God he accomplished the will of the Father. I'm so glad that he came. I'm so glad that he gave his life at the cross. I'm so glad on the third day he arose victorious over death, hell, the grave, the devil, and everything that was against us. Let me share a few things with you today that perhaps will enlighten you pertaining to the Lord and give you better insight about what he has done. Jesus' suffering is revealing. And so understanding by that, we mean today that there are two things today that are revealed in the suffering of the Lord Jesus Christ. First, the perfect obedience of Jesus. He was obedient unto death. He carried out the will of the Father. Makes us look at ourselves today. How obedient are we to the Lord? How much can God count on us today to live for him? Honestly, I get so tired of hearing the excuses why people are not serving the Lord. I know people are providentially hindered. I know people are going through times of sickness and trial. I understand those things. But listen, I don't understand flat out laziness today of just laying down and not doing anything for Christ. Man, it's time that we rise up. I was talking to someone just today, and I was talking about the mere fact of our relationship with the Lord, how the people get become so careless and carefree about their Christianity, and the fact today that we're called to serve God. We're called to be faithful to Him today. Jesus suffered so much, you realize Even before he went to the cross, he suffered. Well, the Bible says in John, he came unto his own, and his own received him not. That's called rejection. He suffered many ways. And thank God, though, that did not defeat him. It actually caused him to push further and to go and to accomplish this will that that was set forth by God the Father. So Jesus not only bore, carried, as sins, but also he 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 bore the outrage that the sins had brought. He took everything. He took the effects of sin. He took the shame of sin. He took the shackles of sin. And friend, he carried it all to the cross. So leading up to the cross, Jesus was mocked by the Jews and of course the crowds and so many people. And even on the on the trial and to the cross, the path to the cross, they were hiring to crucify Jesus. And so if you, if you recall John 1, the scripture says that in that place that he came, his own turned their face against him. They turned against Jesus. You say, preacher, I'd never do that. You do it every day by not serving him, by being ashamed of him, not witnessing for him. Preacher, come on. I'm serious, folks. We've got to get serious about our Christianity and about our salvation. Today, it's it's really the hope that we have and we need to be sharing today. So you look at Matthew's gospel and there's a theme there that Jesus fulfilled the Old Testament prophecies of being the suffering Messiah before ever going to the cross. He he would fulfill everything that was said about him. Well, don't we know also that he said, I didn't come to destroy the law, but to fulfill it. Matthew 27 and 27 says, Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers. So note here that 
This was a public place, one, because the death of Jesus uh, was basically intended to make a political statement. Man, I'm telling you, and look at the world we're living in today. What a shame. Jesus was perceived as a threat to the Roman Empire. And so they, they bring Jesus into a public place to mock him and to put him on display and ultimately take him to the cross. And they think, well, you know, if we can just silence him through crucifixion, a brutal and horrific type of painful death, then he'll be done. Oh, my friend, I'm glad Jesus says, I have power to lay my life down. I have power to raise my life up. And so Matthew 27, 28, 29, and they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. And when they had planted a crown of thorns and put it upon his head and a reed in his right hand, and they bowed the knee, a mockery. They bowed the knee before him and mocked him saying, Hail, King of the Jews. What an embarrassment. What a shame. You know, you think about that. These words were fulfillment of the prophecy 700 years before the Messiah would come. They claimed there was no kingdom greater than that of Rome. My friend, let me tell you what, I'm glad I'm a part of that greater kingdom, and that's the kingdom of God. And I'm sure you are too if you're born again. So they placed a robe around him, a crown uh, upon his head, a reed in his hand, and then they bowed and basically in a humiliation type of worship as they pretended Jesus as some kind of king. It was nothing but a mockery. It was nothing but a shame that they had placed upon themselves. And this was the fulfillment if you read Isaiah 53, and I would encourage you to do that. And so Jesus was mocked, and we really deserve to be not mocked. You go on to Revela, um, uh, rather, uh, Matthew 27, 30, and they spit upon him and took the reed and smote him on the head. And so this is the fulfillment of Isaiah 50 and verse 6. See the progression I'm showing? What was prophesied now was fulfilled. Then verse 31 of Matthew 27, and after that they had mocked him, they took the robe off him and put on his own raiment on him and led him away to crucify him. So this verse points us back to Psalm 22. Then you go to verse 33, 34, and when they were come into the place called Golgotha, that is to say the place of the skull, and they gave him vinegar to drink mingled with gall, and when he had, when he had tasted thereof, he would not drink. It was a bitter, bitter, bitter drink. And again, just another humiliation, another way to try to shame Jesus. And they're trying to make him suffer as much as they humanly can. And so realize this, it, it would even cause, this mixture would cause nausea and make you sick at your stomach. This prediction was made in Psalm 69. Then we read on in verse 35. And they crucified him, part of his garments, casting lots, that it might be fulfilled, which was broke, uh, spoken of by the prophet. They parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. So this was a picture of Psalm 22 and verse 18. And one more example of Matthew's uh, revealing of the prophecy of Christ, and that is in verse 37, because it says, and it set, and it, and set over his head, uh, the, his accusation written, this is Jesus, the King of the Jews, taken again from Psalm 22. This is horrific. This is horrible. But understand, this was the fulfillment. This is what Christ came to do. He didn't come to be accepted politically. He didn't come to win friends and influence people. He came to seek and to save that which is lost. You know what that's inclusive of? All of us. We've all missed the mark, haven't we? We've all, we've all lived in the shame of sin. We've all in that place, and maybe you're there today. Maybe you have not come to Christ. Maybe you've never received him into your heart and your life. 
Today you're lost. Well, preacher, I'm a member of a church. It's not going to save you. Well, pastor, I have been baptized. It doesn't save you. But I shook the preacher's hand. I've got a family lineage of, of people in my family today that's church people. That does not save you. What saves you is when you give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ and you ask him to forgive you of the sin of rejecting him. It's not a head salvation. It's a heart salvation. You're sorrowful of your sin. You're repentant and you ask him to forgive you. A prayer like this. It doesn't have to be a long, lengthy prayer. I mean, you're asking God to forgive you of your sin and come into your heart and your life and save you. It's that simple. But oh, the monumental effect that it brings. The fact is you pray and you say, dear God in heaven, I'm a sinner. And in Jesus name, forgive me of the sin of rejecting you. Come into my heart, come into my life and save me right now. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. A prayer like that will make such a profound difference, not only for now, but it will make a strong difference for the days ahead and especially for your eternity because the Bible says it is appointed unto man once to die after that the judgment after death it's too late that's why you have the golden opportunity now right now to ask Jesus to come into your heart and your life I encourage you to do that and if I can help you in that please contact me. I would be more than honored to lead you to the Lord or help you in any way that I can to enrich your life after salvation. You need to come to church. And honestly, I can't think of a better one than Gethsemane Baptist Church here in Lynchburg. So realizing these things, this is the place that Christ, the King of the Jews, of course, that he came and he came to not only be the salvation provider today, but he also today, we've got to understand who he is. This great I am is the king of kings, the king of all kings, and the Lord of all lords. There's none likened unto him. There's none today, anything close to him. Oh, what a mighty God we serve today. Sometimes, you know, things happen. And we see in Matthew 27, and you can read for yourself, verses 41 through 44, and they move, they talk about Jesus talking to talking about the account of Jesus. So they in this in this portion of scripture they talk about Jesus because they don't even want to acknowledge him. And that's so typical of our world today. People don't want the Lord. We don't want him in our churches. We don't want him in our homes. We don't want him certainly in our schools. And definitely we don't want him in our government. But I'm gonna tell you that's why we are where we are today. That's why today our morals have gone to an all-time low. That's why our kids are so messed up in their head. That's why we have so much drug and alcohol problems. That's why we've got so much domestic uh, abuse. That's why we have all the issues because we have said basically to God, get away, we don't want you, we don't need you. I'm going to tell you, we do need him. We need him in our homes, our lives, our families. We need him in our churches. We need him in our communities. We need him in our society. We need him in every aspect today. So they would not acknowledge his presence. And that is so reflective of where we live today in these days and times in which we find ourselves. So these verses, they really bring us to the point about and talk about the, the perfect obedience of Jesus that he he was perfect in his obedience in going to the cross and accomplishing what he would do for each person today, for you, for I, and every person that would call upon him. So Jesus is who he said that he was. And today we realize Jesus is, get this, I use the word is because that's reflective right now and tomorrow and right on through time, Jesus is the Son of God. Nothing can alter that. They can deny it. They today can refute it. But today they cannot change that fact. He is the son of the living God. He came to die and he came to take our place on the cross. And he drank the bitter cup of our sin that we today could drink the cup of the sweet salvation that he offers. And Jesus in his birth and death would fulfill everything that was declared and proclaimed in God's word. Matthew is saying he is the great I am and he died to take the place of every sinner, which we all are. 
And I'm so glad that he was willing to take and drink of the cup and bear the sin and carry our sorrows and pay the price. Praise God. Thank the Lord. He was willing to go all the way. He was born. And let me tell you what, when he was supposed to to be born. He also was born to whom he was supposed to be born. Everything happened accordingly as God said and dictated in his word. And Jesus did what the father said him to do. He didn't quit. He didn't stop. He could have called 10,000 angels, but no, he didn't. As a matter of fact, he could have just said on the cross, drop dead every human being and it would have happened. But no, that's not why he came. He came to be the propitiation. He came to be the substitute, the sin sacrifice. He came to take our place. Thank God. You should really just give God glory and praise for that fact today. He did what his father sent him to do because it reveals the perfect obedience of Jesus. Now, if Jesus was obedient to go to the cross to die for us, then today, the little that he asked us to do in obedience to love him, to serve him, to surrender to him, I don't think it's asking too much. Today, folks, we've got to get on fire for God. This laid back Christianity this day, this this age in which we're living that you don't take serious the, the fact that you're a child of God today, I think it's you're going to pay for it. There's coming a judgment day. And I'm going to tell you, God's going to hold you accountable for how you've lived your life. Secondly, his suffering reveals the overt wickedness of humanity. So this passage in Matthew 27, it reveals how much about us, about Jesus, and a great need of him. So in these verses, we see how terrible our sins are. Our sins are horrific. They're horrible. They're degrading. They're shameful. Today, sin is being flaunted uh, across television screens and in society. But let me tell you what, the soul that sinneth shall surely what? Die. That's right. And friend, those today that are playing the game of sin today, it's going to come back to bite them. And it's going to come back to destroy them. Let's get this straight. All people are not basically good. You may think, oh, everybody's good and doing the best they can. No, none of us are good. We all have an evil heart. We all are wicked. We all have sin in our life. you got to come to that realization. But Christ can change all of that. He can transform you. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. All people today are actually deserving of hell. But aren't you glad that Jesus was willing to come to make a way that we don't have to go to hell today? God takes it very serious today. And he sent his only begotten son to take care of our sin debt. We had a debt we couldn't pay. He paid a debt he didn't owe. Thank God he did that. And it wasn't just the sins of the people around the cross that drove Jesus there. It's the sins of every person. Every person. And even the sins of people today. It was the sins of all of us that drove the spikes into his hands and his feet. And it was the sins that we committed that placed him there on the cross. And if God gave us what we deserve today, the cross would not even have happened. Folks, I'm glad that it did. You know what that says? It says that our God's a merciful God. That he loves us in a merciful way. And he's willing, hear me, he's willing to forgive us. The sacrifice of Jesus was required. Secondly, if you had heaven without a cross, it would be a compromise of God's holiness. But that is the way. The way of the cross leads home. And so if you had hell without the cross, it would be a compromise of God's love. For God is the only solution and the cross is the only answer. The cross was the requirement to satisfy the justice of God. And to, it was necessary that it, God's holiness demanded it today. And so, you know, uh, the, the, Jewish, uh, the Jewish watch, you, you look at uh, Matthew 27, 45. And for the Jewish watch, the, the sixth hour would have been noon. And the ninth hour would have been uh, about three in the afternoon. So from noon until 3 p.m., 
darkness fell upon the face of this earth. And when Jesus was born, the light of his glory filled the earth. Thank God today. He is the light of the world and he can be the light of your life. He should be the love of your life today. And realizing this, the darkness that invaded our hearts and our lives today, it can be shattered and broken by the blood of Jesus today. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Thank God today. What? Why would God take and place the punishment of his own son? You know why? Because he loved us. And there's nothing you can do to keep God from loving you today. Thank God that he loves us and he gave his life for us. And we have hope today in Christ. Friend, he is the only hope that we have. He's the only hope that we need. And if you have Jesus today, you should be rejoicing. You need to get back in church. You need to get back into your prayer time. You need to get back to reading God's word. You're not on a vacation with God. And then lastly today, Jesus' success is redemptive. Realizing because Jesus took our place, we can live today in the righteousness of God. And so what God is declaring today, the, ta- the veil of the temple was rent in twain. The word of God tells us in Matthew 27 and 31. And thank God where we couldn't go now. He says, come into my presence. Thank God we'll welcome into the throne room of God. And this is a picture today that points us to that future glorious resurrection that one day we're going to leave this world in the moment in the twinkling of an eye. We shall be changed and we shall see him face to face and behold his glory. Oh, what a day that shall be. Could it be near? Could it be coming soon? I honestly believe that. I don't believe this world can continue as it is. Something has got to happen And I believe that happening is going to be the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. I, like John on the Isle of Patmos, is my prayer, even so come, Lord Jesus. Thank God for the great I am who came and took our place at Calvary. Make sure you have him in your life today. Make sure that you know him as your personal savior. Make sure that you're living in obedience to him and watch God mightily bless you. Again, I would like to thank you for tuning in today to Viewpoint. I hope today that your point in your life is to serve God and that your view is clear and concise. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Come worship with us at Gethsemane Baptist Church. Our service times are every Sunday right now is at 9.30 a.m. and 11.30 a.m. And we have the kitty care kit for our children in the pews. And it's a great time of celebration, about an hour to an hour and 10 minute worship service, the preaching, the singing, and a great blessing. You will really get uplifted. People are coming. Children are coming. Young people are coming to this ministry because they're getting fed. And you can come. You're welcome. Come and worship with us and see what our mighty God is doing in this church that's on fire for the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you again today for tuning in. Don't forget our location, 411 Blue Ridge Street. Not hard to find. One block off of Lakeside Drive. That's Route 221. And we're just one block up from the main entrance to the University. University of Lynchburg. I will hope to see you this Sunday for a great celebration of worship in God's house. Please come and let the Lord bless your life and may he bless you good this day. God bless you. Hope to see you soon. We're praying for you.